If you are like me, a sucker for weird internet pseudoscience, you have probably stumbled upon the work of Masaru Emoto at one point. Emoto conducted a number of experiments concerning the supposed influence of human consciousness on reality. His work first came to my attention through a video by the YouTube channel Secure Team 10, which I have linked for you in the description in case you are interested. Amongst some other pretty crazy stuff, the video mentioned Emoto's famous rice experiment, which has become sort of a YouTube phenomenon at this point. If you were to type Emoto rice experiment into the YouTube search bar right now, the results would be plentiful. Being a lazy bastard, that was the first thing I did when I wanted to learn more about the bizarre experiment. I mean, it involves talking to glasses filled with rice and water. That sounds like something a healthy person should have in their life. So, of course I wanted to learn more. A good chunk of the videos trying to recreate it seemed to back up Emoto's claims perfectly with their results, so I was stoked going into it. The beautiful thing about Emoto's rice experiment is that every schlub with a bit of rice and the fitting number of mason jars can recreate it in the comfort of their tiny apartment. And in case you're one of those people too lazy to read the titles of YouTube videos they click on, that's exactly what I did. So did Emoto's experiment give me any cool reality bending powers or make me able to read the thoughts of all rice based dishes I eat? You will have to wait until about uh, 20 seconds of intro to find out. Attention, this is an announcement from the New World Order. Please remain calm and stay seated while we are injecting subliminal messages. Welcome to the cabinet of the strange and macabre. Now first off, before any angry YouTube commenter types out You gotta believe man, this won't work if you don't believe a million times in the comments, I actually try to keep as much as an open mind as possible during my run of the experiment. In fact, I watched most other YouTube videos about the subject after the fact to compare results and only took a small peek at the setup of some other YouTubers conducting their own runs of the experiment to see how they would do it. There seems to be a number of typical errors and weaknesses which occur in most setups of the Emoto Rice experiment. I'll get into those and how I try to avoid them in my setup in a minute. I have detailed my methodology and results in a research journal. I will read to you while showing you some of the video footage I have taken of the whole procedure as well as the setup. In fact, you're watching it right now. I'll mix it in with my ramblings. First off, however, let me explain how the usual setup of the Emoto Rice experiment looks. About two to three teaspoons of cooked rice are placed in three glass jars and covered with a bit of water. One of the glasses is marked love, the other hate and the third ignore. Once daily, somebody walks up to the glasses ignoring the glass labeled ignore and talking to the other two. Positive words are directed towards the glass marked love while the glass marked hate gets rude and hateful ones. This process is repeated over a period of 30 days according to some sources, with some other sources however stating much longer time frames like 50 to 100 days. The idea behind the experiment is basically that the glasses after a certain time should start to look different according to what has been said to them, with the negative glass typically looking a bit more fucked up and the positive one exhibiting traits of looking somehow nice despite being wet soggy rice. Now the most basic problem in many experiments seem to be that the glasses when talked to remain in the same room and next to each other. Every one of us with a basic understanding of sound should see the problem here. I tried to eliminate this factor in my run of the experiment by taking the glasses into another room for testing. Since I sadly don't own a soundproof chamber, my bathroom had to suffice for the occasion. So um, yeah, since I live in a really old house, you are going 
going to see my ancient gloomy bathroom for most of the footage presented. Another inconsistency between some of the experiments seemed to be the type of jar used. While looking around I saw everything from whiskey glasses to simple mason jars or marmalade glasses. To eliminate as much outside influence as possible I decided to go with ones where the lid is held in place by two small metal clamps and sealed with a rubber ring. Also I was able to get those cheap and in quantity. Also, no source seemed to specify an amount of water per jar, so I went with 120 milliliters. For no particular reason. As previously mentioned, the glasses came in bulk, so I decided to test for some additional factors. Those are the main differences in my version of the rice experiment. I asked myself, for example, what would happen if instead of yelling at the glasses yourself, IRL, like a person from the Dark Ages, you would play really loud and aggressive music to it. Or if the rice was able to appreciate short pretentious poetry. So in my version of the rice experiment, there are six glasses. First off, the positive glass as usual, the one I'd give a little pep talk to every day. What a lovely day, isn't it? I really appreciate you being here. I really like you. Thanks for everything. Then of course, the negative glass, the one which I would shit talk and insult. Fuck you! Look at you, you fucking piece of shit! You're a joke! Look at your stupid face! I mean, what are you thinking? You piece of shit glass of rice and nobody takes you fucking seriously. Why don't you go and eat a fucking Tide Pod because you're as dead and as irrelevant as a fucking meme! Then there was a control glass, which I would ignore and not even really take into the bathroom. Then there was the slightly condescending glass, to which I tried to be negative but in a more subtle and not that upfront and loud way to find out if it's really the intent and emotion that determine the rice's reaction or if it's just the fact you're yelling at it. Hey there. You again. 60 days of nothing. How do you feel about that? Uh, I bet like yesterday and the day before and the day before that, the day before. Should I go on? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I'm boring myself to death here and that's usually your stupid job, so I don't want to make you more workless than you already. Also, there was a haiku glass, to which I would every day read a short three-line poem about rice, with the first line consisting of five words, the second of seven, and the third once again of five. Rice in a wet glass. Once daily, someone in talks to it. What a waste of rice. And last but not least, there was a grindcore glass, to which I would every day play the song Raped by Elephants by the band Torsofuck, which I selected because it basically sounds like four minutes of furious yelling to a somewhat nice guitar track, and because the title's kind of funny. Now, I don't want to risk a copyright strike with this or anything, so I can't really show you this song or anything, but I subjected my lovely co-host to this artful piece of contemporary metal and then I recorded his reaction. So, here it is. So, you've just listened to Rap by Elephants. What's your reaction? It was like five minutes, five minutes watching a girl singing like, like a kitchen sink or something like it was very disturbing and I'm saying that from a perspective of someone who sings in a death metal band and actually uses vocals like rolling and but I honestly I don't like this style of singing you can't understand the shit you can't put emotion you can't you, you can, I can't actually hear what she's singing and I'm not saying that that is so important but you could at least have to do need to have some sort of style because she sounds so monotonic and yeah we watched the vocal cover so we watched the girl singing the song but it, it didn't change the overall quality of the song it was like uh, the song itself I really I kind of liked it it had I think it actually had a hook that re reappeared somewhere towards the end of the song but that was interesting there were some nice parts in it but the singing I I think it's kind of pointless. My, there may be people who actually enjoy listening to that kind of singing. I need some energy, some power, some articulation in the vocals in order to make me enjoy the song and not just some monotonic. That's, mm, 
I don't like it. Pretending right now is the reaction of somebody reading the lyrics to Raped by Elephants and uh, just so you know what's going on, um, because nobody understands this song anyway, I'll, I'll just read you one line and you'll uh, be able to set it in context almost instantaneously, I think, and this line is uh, one of them, spread open my buttocks. So yeah, um, I think uh, with this you'll have a pretty good idea what's uh, going on with this reaction because yeah, uh, turns out uh, this isn't a euphemism, this song is actually about being raped by other fans, so yeah, that's, that's disgusting. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm actually appalled by, by what, I've, uh, played, uh, what I've played to this rice all the time. Now that I have gone over the most crucial parts of my methodology, the only thing that remains to say before I show you the test footage is that I talk to every glass of rice roughly the same time every day between 40 and 60 seconds, except of course the grindcore glass which had to listen to the entire song Rape by Elephants which is about 4 minutes in length every day. With the audio for that test in particular being provided by my laptop, I didn't stay in the room for every iteration of this song. I did this experiment for quite some time after all. 75 days to be exact. For that reason the footage you are about to see is heavily edited and I will only show you one test per day and present the footage to you in blocks of 10 days. I also won't show you the full 60 seconds of testing for every glass because that would be quite boring at times. With all that good stuff out of the way, let us begin with the first 10 days of testing. Okay, day one. Um, I'm starting, as you can see, with a positive glass, and yes, uh, I'm going to be very positive to it now. Hey there, you glass of rice, I really like you, and I really appreciate you being here. You are, you know, my favorite of those glasses of rice, and I just wanted to say I really appreciate you being here. You're a nice glass of rice. Day number two, test number two, negative. Well, fuck you, you smart as fucking piece of shit glass of rice. You think you can do this? Just stand around on my table all day? Well, fuck you, no. Get a fucking job or something. You're a disappointment, even for a fucking shite glass of rice. You suck. Day number three, test number three. A slightly condescending one. Huh. So, it's you again, the unremarkable glass of rice. Um, yeah, you're still doing kind of uh, boring out there. You look quite, yeah, okay, I guess. I mean, I still slightly dislike you. In number four, trial number four, the Haiku glass. Rice in a wet glass. Once daily, some moron talks to it. What a waste of rice. Day number five, test number five. Raped by elephants. Um, okay. So, let's just um, have the rice face the music. Sixth day of the experiment before testing. As you can see, liquid in most glasses has taken on a certain murkiness. Except the positive one, however. The starch in the positive one seems to have sunk into the ground, like it previously only happened with uh, with the control jar. But by this point, even the control jar is slightly murky, while the positive one remains clear as day, despite having been tilted while testing yesterday, um, as I do with all the glasses. Um, in comparison, you see the negative one, it's uh, bubbling a bit, and um, the water seems to be not as clear as in the positive one. Um, okay then, let's commence with the testing as usual. Number six, test number one, positive. Thank you. I really like your glass of rice. I mean, you're the positive one, so yes, you're my favorite glass of rice and I'm looking forward to seeing you and working with you every morning. I'm very thankful that you 
um, seem to work out this fine in all this um, testing and that you look so much better than the other glasses. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate that. Just a quick update on day 6. Uh, I did the tests in the morning, now it is evening and once again the positive glass has settled first and all the starch is uh, at the bottom with the rice again while the other glass is uh, here's the negative one, it's actually bubbling a bit. Negative. This glass is uh, as well as the um, as well as the ignore glass pretty murky and uh, so is the raped by elephants glass which has some uh, bubbles going on at the top there if the camera would focus here you can see it. Um, and yeah, that one is pretty murky too, this is a slightly condescending one. And the second most bubbly one is the Haiku glass. Interesting. After the first 10 days of testing it seemed that differences between glasses, though small at first, were definitely becoming visible, especially in the behavior of the starch which seemed to separate from the rice grains in most glasses and would remain suspended in the water after testing in all glasses but the positive one. It was also of note that most other glasses seemed to develop small bubbles rising from the rice. In my test log from the 11th of December 2017 I wrote, the positive glass seems to continually have the clearest water out of the bunch. The starch rises as I move it for testing but it seems to settle much faster than in all the others. Even the control glass. Let us now go over the next 10 days of testing before I get into some flaws in my methodology which I would try to avoid should I ever consider a second run of this experiment and which everyone who wants to do their own version of this experiment should keep in mind. Day 11, I can't believe I'm doing this for 11 days now and the camera seems to have some problems with focus today but this is test number one, positive. Day number 12, test number 2, negative. Hey there, dipshit. Ever heard of the song, Killing Myself for Christmas? You should probably fucking do that because I fucking hate you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Number 13, test number 4, the Heiko glass. Rice in a wet glass. Once daily, a moron talks to it. What a waste of rice. Day number 14. Um, test uh, number 3. The slightly condescending glass. Mm. Hey there. You look like always. Slightly dislikable. Um, I don't really know what to say to you because we don't have any, any of the same interests. I mean, you're a fucking glass of rice. and I'm just about to begin testing but look at that something finally happened this is a positive glass and uh, do you see those icky lumpy things up there oh fuck this one time I'm filming something some asshole walk through the through the fucking stairwell coughing ah shite ah, well look at this um, I mean do you see this this gooey stuff I don't really know what it is but it's uh, it's in the positive jar and um, it is only in the positive jar. Uh, and when I said I don't know what it is, I mean I know it's the skins of the rice grains, but uh, why they are there, I, I have no bloody clue. So um, day number fifteen, glass uh, test, uh, whatever uh, number five, uh, the elephanty one. So yeah, rap by elephants. Let's play the stupid song. Um, I'm getting sick of it already, um, but it's only day 15. It is day 16 and um, 
around 11 p.m. and I just wanted to show you this crazy shit. See, in the positive glass there is this uh, long string of rice skin hanging uh, hanging like this. Pretty cool, huh? That's, that's kind of neat. Uh, look at that. Day 17 and uh, once again here this is a positive glass and it's still the only glass that uh, uh, that has the rice inside shed its skin and the skin then float to the top. Let's say some positive stuff to it. Hey there, Merry Christmas! I hope you have a nice day. I really like you. I mean, you're my uh, rice glass of the month employee if you mon uh, of the month, if you will. So, uh, I mean, if you were an inanimate an object, I'd just make you the host of this show because you're such a positive personality, you know? Day 18, um, test number 4, the hypoglass. Hey, let's get started. Rice in a wet glass. Once daily, some more and talks to it. What a waste of rice. In number 19, test number 3. Slightly condescending. Hey there. Yeah. Still nothing changed with you. So, what are your plans for the holidays? Staying at home alone, I suppose, because uh, kind of reckon you don't have many friends um, because you yeah, you are slightly annoying. In number twenty, test number two, negative. Hey there, hustle. Oh well, I hope your day sucks. Fuck you. I mean, hanging around alone at Christmas, loser. You're a fucking loser. Yeah, nobody likes you because you're a fucking glass of rice and stinky one at that, so yeah, you're disgusting. Ah, get the fuck out of here. Well, that was nice, wasn't it? Almost looks like we have some sort of results here. Then again, I wouldn't have done this for 75 days if this would have been anything close to satisfying results for me. And I shouldn't get any over the next 10 days either. And I think I could even mute the next 20 or so days of this rice theme themed Groundhog Day-esque absurdity and talk right over them because I have a lot to say and there's really not much going on. I think I'm just going to do that because we have 75 days of this to get through. So before as promised we get into the flaws in my methodology, let me read a quick note from my research journal for you from day 15. When touching the lid while picking up the glasses, the negative and the haiku jar emitted a small hissing and a bad smell. Gases seem to be building up inside the test jars. This indicates decomposition. I'll be more careful from now on when picking them up. I want you to keep that in mind because it is going to come back and bite us when we are talking about the results. It's also a good transition to the flaws in my methodology though, so let's talk about that, shall we? So the most obvious weakness of the experiment, as I have mentioned it about 20 seconds ago, is of course that my equipment was cheap as hell and is therefore most certainly not perfect. The journal entry I just read to you about the negative glass should demonstrate that there should be serious concerns about the air tightness of those glasses. This however is also the case in every other iteration of the experiment I have seen so far on the internet. Another weakness of the experiment people don't usually think about is that it is quite hard to have a genuine emotional reaction to a glass of rice. This of course is kind of a problem in an experiment which is supposedly entirely based on the emotion which is projected onto the glasses. However, if you're not coincidentally a professional in the art of drama, I don't really know how to avoid this problem. So um, for those who want to really get deep into this rabbit hole, it's uh, acting lessons I guess? Not all flaws in my methodology are so hard to fix however. One goof for example you could avoid by learning from my failure is that during the first 10 days of testing I tended to grasp and hold on to the glasses during testing which is of course kind of pointless if you think about it and just another unnecessary factor which could influence the outcome of the experiment. Another problem I was facing was that no online source was specific about if it is important to say the same things to the rice every day or to just improvise some bollocks like I did. 
And last but not least, the movement the glasses were getting from being lugged into another room every day definitely influenced the results in some way. So the perfect way to conduct this experiment would be to place every glass in a different room with similar conditions and go into the rooms every day to talk to the glasses without ever moving them. But that's quite hard in a one room apartment, all right? So there you have it. I'm not perfect. Who would have guessed? But in case you feel inclined to do the experiment on your own, I have given you quite the comprehensive list of what not to do. There is however another factor which I don't really see as a flaw of mine because it was really not in my power to change anything about it and that factor is the weather around my parts of the world. While most iterations of the rice experiment seem to originate from somewhere around America, I live in a part of the world where it's usually cold as a witch's tit, so um, since I conducted the experiment over the winter, it was usually around minus 10 degrees Celsius outside and not that warm inside either, so this might have been a factor in why my rice wouldn't decompose as crazily as some of the other internet rice did. Maybe if I were to repeat the experiment over the Summer, I would get some more exciting results. Speaking of which, let's check in on the rice. I bet it's still doing the same shit as the weeks before. Hello everybody, to day 41 of the same shit. Test number one, positive. Hey there, lovely day, isn't it? Hey, you dumb shit! Ah, oh, you look like fucking crap today. Like always, and you're still good for bloody nothing. Hey there, you again. Uh, yeah, man, I, man, I mean, I know I would be talking to you today, but I uh, don't think I was looking forward to that. I mean, yeah, I slightly dislike you, so... Uh, fuck you, I guess. Rice in a wet glass. Once daily, some more talks to it. What a waste of rice. It's day number 45, test number 5, with a really messed up lighting because I focused the camera on the PC screen thingy. Oh, laptop, I mean, whatever. Fuck, oh, let's just play the song. This is the last test for tonight and I'll have to, to put all the footage from like 10 days onto my computer and name it. Hey there, peace. Uh, I hope you're having a great time. You look great today. I really like you. I appreciate you being here. Fuck you! Ah, uh, really fucking hate you. You're still doing nothing and you're standing around here looking like on um, day fucking one. Hey, hey there, you boring one. I uh, just uh, wanted to say something to you, I guess. Uh, like, for example, that I slightly dislike you. Day 49. Test number four, the Heiko glass. I like this one, because I already know what I have to say. Rice in a wet glass. Once daily, some orange talks to it. What a waste of rice. Hello everybody, it's day 50 and it's pre-testing, so um, just wanted to do like a short overview over what the glasses look like and I wanted to show you that there's actually some difference between them going on with the starch in the positive glass and the starch in the in the ignore glass um, being the only ones which uh, fully settle now because uh, as you see with the others um, well maybe not with slightly condescending where it's just a bit murkier um, this here, for example, raped by elephants, it's it's really bloody murky. Um, I mean, now the camera seems not to focus right. Case in point, I uh, think you see it uh, right here. This um, control glass, raped by elephants, control glass, and the negative one, which is the second murkiest. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. And now the camera seems to have uh, finally settled on the rice. But uh, with this glass, it's even that murky that you can't really make out any individual grains of rice on the video like you can with a control glass. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of a result actually. So, there you have it. Another legit result.
And speaking of results, that's a pretty good transition to what's up next, because for the last 25 days of the experiment, literally nothing interesting happened, so I am just going to play them in like a double or triple speech while talking over them. And then we are going to look at the results, because I actually documented the opening of every glass on video. But first off, let me just read you the last few entries in my research search log in a semi-dramatic voice. Day number 50, 24th of January 2018. Pre-testing survey showed that after having the starch in the water settle for 24 hours, only the water in the control jar, which had not been shaken, remained fully clear. From the glasses in which the starch had been shaken up, however, the positive glass was the only one in which the water reached almost the same clarity. All other glasses remained noticeably misty, with the highest amount of free-floating starch still in the water in the grindcore glass, followed by the negative glass. Both of those showed almost identical levels of mistiness. The haiku and slight dismay glass were also slightly foggy, though not nearly as much as the two previously mentioned ones. Day 60, 4th of February. 2018. No further changes since day 50. And that's pretty much it. With that, the next entry in my journal is literally day 75, where I did a little thing where I looked at the glasses before I opened them. But I think we can actually skip that, because other than the results I got when actually opening the glasses, there were no further changes since day 50. With that, get out your gas masks, because it is time to open some really rotten glasses of rice. I just arranged the glasses, um, determined by the water's clarity, so um, as you can see it starts with ignore, positive, the haiku glass, and then we have negative raped, the, raped by elephants and slightly condescending, which all pretty much look exactly the same. Um, it should be noted that, um, that until a few days ago, slightly condescending looked a bit clearer than the other, uh, than, uh, the other two, but uh, as you can see now with the visibility of my, of my hand through the glass, there is not much of a difference, um, except of course here with the, with uh, the glasses, which aren't that murky. Mm. See, you can you can even see my fingers. Isn't that nice? It is time for the opening of the glasses, and as you can see, I have prepared a little testing area. And by testing area and prepared, I mean I draped a raggedy kitchen towel over my living room table. And uh, now, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna need some rubber gloves because uh, who knows what monstrous. Uh, Forms of microbial life have developed in those glasses. I'm gonna open the thing and uh, take a good long whiff. Uh, oh my, what? crikey! Oh, 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 blimey! Uh, this, this isn't nice. Oh, it uh, actually smells a bit like uh, a bit like uh, sake, but. Uh, yeah. Like, um, really cheap sake somebody left uh, standing around open for 20 years and, uh, it's not very pleasant. I'm going to deposit the water now in uh, this here much too lovely whiskey glass. Actually, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it because uh, what the hell this is for science, isn't it? This um, positive one actually smells like a bit sweet-ish sour, um, with like this uh, slight note of decay, but uh, it's not as bad as I would have imagined. Um, I mean, this will for you be anecdotal evidence, cause you can only ref um, refer to what I'm saying here, but uh, I'll have a little uh, test with the smell of those and see if there's any differences, like um, I'm going to smell every one of those glasses and 
Ugh, this, it's, it's, it's disgusting. This is the part where I was originally going to show you how I sift through the rice in all the glasses against the backdrop of the black paper I had placed on the table for exactly that purpose. After two or three glasses, however, I realized that the rice in every single one of them looked pretty much the same for some reason. So I think I'm not robbing you of any entertainment value in particular if I cut this for the most part or I just show some shortened clips extremely sped up. What was somewhat entertaining however were my reactions to the horrible stench which was emitted by most of the glasses so I will leave my reactions to that in for the most part. Also I went through smelling every single one of them. That wasn't very pleasant as you can imagine so I'm better gonna use it for something. I really have to gag when I'm smelling on this one so yeah I don't know this this is um, quite strange. Strange, I'd say. Um, this one really smells. Uh, it's 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 hard to describe. Uh, it uh, also has this this this, this rotten this is rottenness to it, but it really smells like shit. Uh, there's no better word to describe it. It it, it smells like like raw sewage or something. It's it's really horrible. Um, now I'm actually kind of sad that you don't have smell o vision because uh, one has to smell this to um, get the difference and I don't know if uh, I'm willing to sniff it once more because the last two times I nearly had to puke and that wouldn't be nice on camera so let's get the water out of this bloody thing shall we? And before anybody thinks that this is some kind of stupid challenge or extravagant suicide attempt, I of course didn't drink the water after filling it in the whiskey glass, but dispose of it in the garden between filming the individual scenes, since I didn't want to get this stuff anywhere near my kitchen or bathroom sink. For something that vile smelling shouldn't come anywhere near where I prepare my food or where I shave. It's just this one, this one's just more pungent and uh, more musky for some reason, so I really don't know why. Um, oh, and the, the rice itself uh, has a slight hint of rotten milk to it for some reason. So the positive glass actually smells a bit like wine and uh, definitely much better than the negative one, while the negative one smells like shit and decay and death. So does that mean the whole Emoto thing is right and we now all get to reality bend with our emotions and turn water and rice into rice wine by just being fucking nice to it? Well, I'm afraid no, because you see there are still four glasses we have uh, not explored yet among them, the control glass. And of course the grindcore one, which had to listen to the song Rape by Elephants by the band Torsofuck for all the time. And let's just say there are some peculiarities with that one, which make me suspect that there's an elephant in the room. No, literally, I think my flat might be haunted by an elephant. But we'll get to that uh, later, I guess. Hmm. This one isn't nearly as bad as a negative one. It, um... I don't know if it really has this this uh, touch of spoiled milk, but it uh, or if it's just left from the negative one still. Um, but this one actually smells like uh, you'd like you take the positive one and put a few drops of negative water into it. So yeah, maybe this is just uh, a moto themed confirmation biased speaking. table once more prepared, we have reached glass number four, the Heiko glass. Um, so yeah, let's just crack it open, shall we? Ah, dislike this already. It's disgusting, it's, it's really disgusting, but this one really doesn't... 
It doesn't smell that strong. Uh, it's mostly like the positive glass, I'd say. <laughs> Smells much more fermented. Hmm. This one, yeah. Fermentation with a hint of rotten egg. Now it is time to open the control glass. Uh, so yeah. The ignore glass, uh, it's, uh, it's a turn of this bloody thing. Uh, uh, this here of wonderful glass of rice, which is the control glass, smells like all the other rice. Actually, it smells exactly like the haiku glass, so yeah. Um, so much for the whole um, Emoto thing, I guess. Uh, For, for some reason I can't seem to find the the fifth glass uh, red by elephants one um, yeah it's uh, it's gone somehow I, I might have just left it in the testing chamber which is my bathroom uh, but luckily for plot convenience reasons I have opened and emptied it earlier anyways and filmed it so I can just insert that footage in post right here while I go and fetch the stupid thing. Bloody hell, blimey. Earlier that evening. It is day 75, the last day of the experiment of the testing, and for some reason I suddenly got the feeling that I should open this glass earlier and do it in here. I was just uh, about to go over and over, open the other glasses on my much comfier and better lit set, but for some reason let's just do this one here. I'm sure this won't somehow tie into some, some stupid joke later in the video, so uh, here, I don't know. Uh, let's, just, let's just open the glass, shall we? Red by elephants, um, yeah. At least I won't have to listen to that song anymore. So, um, yeah, let's open this. And actually, I kind of wonder what those things will smell, so... Uh, just, just smell it, I know that's anecdotal evidence, but uh, You just have to trust me on this one. Whoa. 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 Oh god, oh god, that's, ah, that's horrid. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a very pungent smell of rotch and it uh, kind of, kind of reminds me of uh, spoiled dairy products. Um, and it has like, oh god, I'm, I'm gonna smell it again just to give you an accurate picture. Uh, it really smells a bit like... Like, like uh, if you mix a bit of rice wine with uh, with spoiled milk from 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 like five bloody years ago or something, um, and it's it's horrid. It's uh, I nearly had to puke. Uh. Later that evening. Addendum one a, uh, the only one I guess. On the nineteenth of February two thousand and eighteen, day seventy five of the experiment, glass number five. The grindcore glass has been attacked by a member of the species Elephants Maximus, also commonly known as the Asian elephant. While unsupervised in a closed room designated for testing, luckily the glass had conveniently been opened and examined before the sample could have been contaminated by the, um, elephant DNA. Research as to the whereabouts of the elephant as well as how it could have manifested in the room are still ongoing. So what have we learned after 75 days of talking to rice in glasses? Overall, not much, I'd say. I mean, for the first few days it looked like Emoto's claims were pretty much supported by how the rice was acting and how the clarity of the water in all the glasses differed according to which emotion was directed towards them. But then again, the glass which simply had to listen to loud and aggressive music 
acted exactly the same as the glass which was actually insulted by me every day. Also, the rice skin swimming around in the positive glass was somewhat strange and somewhat of a result. But other than that, most of the rice looked pretty uninteresting even after 75 days of this. Keeping all that in mind, I think we are stuck with one of three series. The first one of course being that Emoto was right and all the evidence against it is just due to me not being serious enough about the whole thing or not emotive enough or something. We could also come to the conclusion however that with how the glass witch was confronted with music acted and how the slightly condescending glass took much longer to get murky that the rice's reaction indeed has to do with the sound that is directed at it which would explain the similar results I got with the music and the yelling. Oh, and then there's also of course the option that not all rice decomposes at the same rate or maybe my glasses were just shitty. And remember when I said, I want you to keep that in mind because it is going to come back and bite us when we're talking about the results. I told you to keep that in mind for a reason. And with all that said, since we're doing pseudoscience here anyway, just Pick whatever conclusion suits you best and wait for me to maybe do a second part of this where I'll try to not mess up that many things. So that was the motorized experiment. Uh, though I still can't figure out how this elephant got in my flat. I mean I've got some um, animal catchers over to get rid of the problem but they can't seem to find him. Oh my god! He's hiding behind the shower curtain! Holy, holy shit! What's, what, what, what the fuck? I didn't know elephants do that. I'm really surprised by that. But he's doing it! <laughs> well, uh, looks like it's time for me to address the elephant in the room. So, uh, what do you want? This experiment was hogwash. So, uh, uh, why is that? Well, the whole smell thing was entirely anecdotal, and even if the rice acted somewhat like it should according to that Emoto guy, ever heard of correlation doesn't equal causation? Dipshit. Ah, uh, kind of addressed that, I guess. Oh, and shouldn't you say the same thing to them every day? And isn't it kind of an oversight that you talk to all the glasses about a minute except for the haiku glass and the one with the music? Ah, uh, guess you have a point there. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll account for that next time I try the experiment, okay? Good. If anyone needs me, I will just find myself down the road. <laughs>